Uh, it is Sunday, August 24th, 2025. Thank you for coming to my channel. And I am going to show you today how to use or how to uh, employ the swipe to dismiss function in an Android application. So when you're building your apps, if you ever remember on how uh, Gmail works or any of the many of the mail clients work, you can swipe to the left on a mail item and it will disappear from the screen or you can swipe to the left and an action will occur. So I'm going to show you how to do a basic swipe action on Android so that I can do something like this. Swipe these elements to the right and watch it disappear and attempt to swipe to the left and watch nothing happen. Um, so yeah, and you can obviously extend this to do uh, more interesting things as well. So I'm going to swipe to the right. And now, uh, so how do we get this done? So first we need to build a composable and I'll call it um, uh, swipe swipe to dismiss dismiss function whatever um, so we'll start that right here swipe to dismiss function and in this swipe to dismiss function I'm going to create a list of items so I'm going to use a lazy column and in this lazy column I'm going to create uh, several basic items just a list of a list of uh, a b c so that will be a mutable state list of a a b c okay so why do we use a mutable state list here instead of a regular list um, well if you're familiar with compose as you should be the state list uh, is going to maintain uh, a list that when the contents of the list are mutated, then the composition cycle r reflects that. If you use the regular list here, just like a mutable list or mutable uh, list a state with a regular non-mutable state list or snapshot list, as they call it, then the uh, mutation of the list wouldn't be reflected in the composition state. So I need a mutable state list to handle that. So um, once I have my state list of items, what I can do in my lazy column, uh, I can add items. And I'll add it from my list of items here. And then what I'll do is add a key. And so this key is going to make sure that I can associate each item with a key so as the list gets mutated and it can remember the dismissal can occur anywhere within the middle of the list this will help maintain the integrity of the list so uh, now that we have a key uh, we will create our dismiss state dismiss state um, and I always uh, it's one s I always forget that okay so uh, we remember swipe to dismiss box state. Um, that's what it's called for the later material three APIs. And now um, this is going to be the state that maintains the dismissal of each item. In this state, you can control w what direction should dismiss the item versus what direction should um, uh, do something else or both the directions can dismiss the item. Um, so you can do that by adding logic like this equals swipe to dismiss box value start to end else if now there's three states here settles start and start to end um, we are going to look at start to end and end to start and just for our example equals swipe to dismiss box value and to start okay in this case what we can do is now we can pick uh, what we want to do on each direction. So, by the way, uh, this lambda has to return uh, a boolean, oh, and I need to actually put the lambda. So this is the confirm value change lambda. I'm going to put those params in here. So confirm value change, then hey, if the swipe to dismiss is left to right, uh, then, or start to end, then we'll do something. If it's end to start, we'll do something else. In and finally, we have to return a Boolean, so I'm going to return a true here. But if it's start to end, what we want to do, I want to remove the items. So 
Um, because we have this key here, there shouldn't be any state inconsistency that occurs. Um, but let's make sure that we call out what our item is. And if we move from uh, left to right, or right to left, we don't actually want to do anything. So we'll just return false. And so this should cover any states that are not right to left uh, motion will uh, return true in this situation. So now that we have our dismiss state, we have to create our swipe to dismiss box. So we have a state, dismiss state. And uh, we will also have uh, enable enable dismiss from start. Now this is kind of annoying, but you know, it's kind of the way it is. Um, this function, this confirm value change lambda doesn't contain all of the functionality that we need to ensure the direction that we pick of dismissal is, is set properly. So we need to also prevent dismissal explicitly from the states that we don't want to in the swipe to dismiss box. So the swipe to dismiss box will be aware of that, though I do think an advancement would be making sure uh, this is the confirmation, this is enabling, making sure what happens in the Lambda. It would be nice to combine these in some way, but for now we'll leave it as it is. And then we have the content and we have background content. Okay, Content is going to be the circles that I showed you before. Uh, those are the things that you actually move and swipe to dismiss. Background content is going to be what's underneath those when you actually dismiss the content, what's remaining underneath what you dismissed. Um, while you're doing the motion. Uh, so I'll show you an example. So um, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, have, for each of these items that we want to swipe to dismiss, I'm going to create four of them. Okay. And uh, I am going to, I don't need to do this. I'm just going to create a box modifier and I'm gonna say uh, in the modifier I'm going to just make sure uh, fills the max width of the screen and inside the box itself I'm going to have uh, well I'm going to have a, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a row um, I could just have a box too, but I just want to do a row because I might want to do something a little fancier, but I'll show you in a minute. Um, modifier dot left fill max width. And in this case, we don't want to fill max width. I want to give a size to the internal box of 100 dp. And so what I want to do in this box is um, I want to give it a color, background color color, color dot blue, and uh, circle shape. So now it has a color and a shape associated with it. And um, yeah, so right now, at this point in time, I can run this, and we'll see what happens, if anything. Okay, now you see I have three circles. And as you can see, if I try to dismiss left to right, there's nothing. If I dismiss right to left, there's something. Okay, great. So that's this basic code here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to red. And I'm going to put underneath in the background another color just to determine what happens when you uh, move. And there's a background element. And you remove an element underneath. So I put a cyan color circle. And as you can see, underneath there is a cyan circle. So if I just fling it just enough and it doesn't go back to its original position then and dismisses, then you'll see the circle underneath blink away too. But otherwise you'll see the cyan circle uh, underneath if it's going to reset, if the item is going to reset back to its original position. So, okay, so that's basically it. Um, uh, I will do an extended version of this at some point, but uh, this should be a pretty straightforward in how to uh, implement a basic swipe to dismiss. And you can have, uh, you can turn this into a box. You can turn this into any other kind of shape you want. And yeah, well, thank you. Uh, so if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and um, 
yeah, give me some feedback so uh, I'll be able to produce more content as time goes on. Uh, thank you so much.